All right, pleased to be joined now by TJ Kasner of the Clemson Tigers. TJ, how are you doing this morning? Doing great. Just spending some time with my family out here. All right, uh, before we uh, talk about uh, the upcoming season, let's talk about an amazing 2014 year, um, a lot of accomplishments, but uh, why do you think the team was able to have so much success? You know, if I were to point to one thing, it would definitely be our close-knit nature. Um, we had a rough start to the season and, you know, didn't get off to a winning start, lost a few games in a row. Um, and, you know, we were kind of at a tipping point when we were 6-6 six and six on the season. And, you know, it could have gone one or two ways, but our coach you know, told us to stick together. And as simple as it may sound, I think that's the main reason why we ended up where we did. It's just because of a family knit unit. With so many players coming back this year, is that something that you guys have built upon? It's something that you kind of know is going to be there this this year? I think definitely the culture is there. We lost a few seniors that had a uh, an impact that you know we won't be able to fill the, in the same way. Um, kind of like the, found, the foundation, the creators of how the program has been for the last few years. Um, but you know, players like myself and the other seniors, Paul, Kyle, uh, Andrew Tarbell coming in. We have uh, some really good leadership, and I don't think we're going to miss a beat. When you have, when you think about last year, you have to think about that amazing ACC tournament run and a couple of crazy games and PKs, and obviously that that final. What is what is your what are your memories of that week, and and in particular that 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 final? Well, I mean, my memories are. I wish I could go back and and do it again, but uh, you know, it's the third time that I've been to. The ACC tournament, and there's, you know, as a college soccer player, there's no real feeling like showing up to a stadium like that and playing. Um, but, you know, my memories from that are, are, you know, obviously winning, and you know, going going in the locker room with my team and and uh, and celebrating. But, you know, I think even more so than that were the times leading up to the game. So in the locker room before, seeing everybody's attitude. Um, at halftime, seeing everybody wanting to get back out there, um, I, I don't think that there was a better environment, you know, a better team culture than than ours at that time. You know, seeing everybody firing on all on all cylinders and 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 really wanting to get after it. You know, those are my memories, and that's probably you know my best picture is seeing everybody on the same page. Were there any behind-the-scenes moments there in that uh, in that final where you know you guys are trailing for most of the game, trying to chase that, and somebody maybe pull somebody together, or or a, or a moment there that uh, you know if you're if you're watching the game you miss, but if you were you know wearing a Clemson jersey, you guys all remember it. You know, I think there there wasn't really much except for our, our halftime, and um, it it really kind of was a halftime that I remember similarly to a state cup way back in the day for me and you know we were losing at halftime my, my coach brought us in and he said listen I've never seen a team play this well and lose and I think you know and at the college level now we went into the halftime and we said you know it's it's not in our nature to back down that's you know that's not what Clemson's about especially these last few years and I don't think there was one person in the locker room that had any doubt and I mean even going into those last Ten seconds where it was very, very edgy. Um, I, I really don't think that you know that our team was capable of thinking about losing. Well, you talked about an amazing atmosphere in that ACC tournament. It, it had to be equally, or maybe in a different way, but but similarly, an outstanding atmosphere at uh, Historic Riggs Field for your NCAA tournament. Talk a little bit about that experience and the NCAA tournament experience that you guys got last year that that you either want to build on change, duplicate, and things like that? Well, um, you know, the NCAA tournament is, is, is something special. And, you know, playing at home is, is, you know, it was the first time that I played an NCAA tournament game at home. Um, you know, my sophomore year in 2013, we lost some penalty kicks to Elon. And, you know, I was one of the penalty takers and missed. And so I know the feeling of, of losing out. Um, but, you know, playing in this past this past year with our home crowd, uh, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, there's truly a Clemson family. The support, uh, the fans that come out for those kind of games is unbelievable. And, you know, a lot of people talk, especially our coach, about how good the environment is at Riggs. And, 
you don't really understand it until I guess you play and you know you see how many people are behind you it's it's a different reality honestly some teams approach NCAA tournament play in a different way and I'm curious as to as to your all's approach sometimes you treat it like a different game and other times you you know are aware of your surroundings and that it that has it you know that the outcome is is final um, what was is your guys's approach to that uh, I did I think that it's kind of both sides um, I think that our coach was very very clear that this was an NCAA tournament game and but the way that we would treat it was actually the opposite I think of what some teams would do and what I mean by that is when you see an NCAA tournament game coming up you know a lot of teams take that in their mind and maybe you know they overthink it and maybe get frantic don't play their game so our, our whole team's mantra was to you know get back to the basics the fundamentals of how we were winning games and performance based you know games during the season so you know, I think in that week spanning between our last game and you know, our first NCAA tournament game, I think it was we were taking a step back, understanding where our performances were coming from, trying to apply that rather than let the hype and you know all of the um, you know the difficulties if you lose, you're out. You know, kind of let that get into our head. All right, let's go ahead and move forward to the spring season, and and we. Did already mentioned that you do have a lot of players returning, but you do have some pieces that you need to fill, and every every squad is different. So, how did the spring go in terms of, you know, it's going to be a different eleven out there this year? How did it go, kind of integrating some of those pieces? Um, yeah, I think we had I think we had a pretty good spring. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't win as many games as I think as a team and uh, as a culture we would have liked to, but <clears throat> at the same time we. You know, the spring is all about rebuilding and all about, you know, trying new pieces out, like you said. Um, but, yeah, we had to replace pretty much our entire back line. Aside from, aside from Kyle Fisher, we've got three new defenders that are going to be playing back there. Um, so I think that that was one of the main focal points of our spring, um, trying to make sure that we would be solid along the back and also, um, you know, trying to keep up our – you know, our attacking prowess. So, because we're returning almost every single attacker besides Manolo Sanchez. Um, and we're going to have some firepower, but I think even more so, our coach was focusing on making sure that our attack was even better and then kind of filling in those defensive pieces. But, you know, we've got guys that have been redshirted and playing underneath our, uh, our former seniors. I don't think, I don't think they're going to have an issue stepping out on the field because of their leadership before. What about your role? You talked about a lot of the offensive weapons, and you talked about Paul earlier, kind of linking up with him. How do you see your role, though, in in, in terms of being one of the key pieces and 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 being you know a part of that 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 prowess? Well, you know, I, I like to, you know, looking back on last season, um, coming off of being the you know tied leader in points, I think that that's a huge step to build on, and. You know, my role in that is I want to do more goals, I want to do more assists, and that's just, you know, as simple as I can put it. I want to, you know, put the team first, make sure that I'm connecting with the other attacking pieces, not kind of take it on as a solo role. But, you know, even more so, you know, instead of having one or two guys, you know, myself getting five or six goals, you know, I want to have six or seven of our attackers all having five or six goals. So, you know, I guess in my in terms of my role, when I get on the field, I want to make all of our players in the attacking half better. And you know, being a senior now and having that kind of experience from playing, um, especially you know, playing with Tommy McNamara back in 2013, you know, he was the guy that made everybody in the front half look good. And you know, because of that, he excelled himself. So um, I'm, I'm I've really I've been talking to him a little bit and. Uh, I'm trying to kind of follow in those type of footsteps, make my players around me better, and then also definitely build individually from last year. All right. Well, tell me a little bit personally. You got you, as we mentioned in the in the outset, uh, coming from California into Clemson. Um, tell me a little bit about that transition, and also a mechanical engineer major. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But tell me about uh, coming from California to Clemson. Um, it was. 
a huge, huge change. I mean, the culture in the South is, it's, you know, I can't even describe how many differences there are, but all I can say is that I was very, very lucky to come in to a soccer team. If, if, I, if I had come in on my own as a student, I'd, I'd probably still be lost. I mean, you know, from the Southern hospitality to the football culture to, you know, kind of this, even just the general athletics culture here is, is so, so much different. But um, I think I had kind of a, a tough transition at first, but over time, really starting to enjoy it and kind of enjoy the way Clemson does things and it, the way the South kind of works. It's, 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 not, it's really hard to explain because the cultures from the West Coast to the South is just different planets, honestly. Have you changed with it, or has it changed with you? Um, I have not changed with it. I, I'm not a, you know, I, I still don't do the boat shoes and khaki shorts and all that good stuff. But, but uh, I've definitely, I've definitely um, gotten used to uh, how people do things and starting to appreciate it. Well, let's get into your major though, and, and the mechanical engineering. What what are you uh, looking to do with that, as in terms of a career, and also you know the difficulties of balancing, you know that's you know it's not just uh, soccer for you. It, it's that's a pretty intense major to kind of try and balance. Yeah, no, it's it's um, it's been tough. I've I've definitely had a uh, a learning learning experience um, early on because. You know, as a mechanical engineer and soccer player, there aren't many of us uh, around. Um, there's only about, I want to say, three or four mechanical engineers in the whole athletic department. Um, so, in that way, finding links and finding you know people to get help from or talk to, in terms of um, just trying to get ahead, I, you know, it, it's tough because you kind of have to build your own path. You know, when you're, when you're in another major on our team, like business or um, finance, there are other people in there and they can help you and you've got people you're close to. But, you know, going off into mine, you kind of got to, you make your own friends outside the athletic department where you can get help and, uh, and that sort of thing. So, you know, in that regard, balancing it and doing that on my own has been tough. Um, but, you know, going in the future... I'm hoping to go to law school. So it may sound like an interesting transition, but there's a field called patent law, which requires mm -hmm. you to have an undergraduate degree in engineering. From there, you can do patent law, and it's a, it's a very interesting field for me because you get to do a bunch of design work. Um, so it's a bunch of design work, looking at new designs, you know, helping people um, kind of go forward with their own creations. And so that's something that I'm looking forward to. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any inventor side to you, or or what maybe got you interested in that portion? Because that you, like you said, that is an interesting kind of combination to combine, you know, the the law aspect with the actual, you know, those almost seem like different parts of the brain too. Yeah, no, definitely different parts of the brain. Um, but you don't necessarily have to be a litigator. You know, you don't ex exactly have to go to court and right. and argue with someone. That's uh, that's just you know the show and tell part, but um, a lot of behind the scenes work is is a lot of engineering. I do have an inventor side to me. Um, I'm also uh, I'm also doing a lot of software design, um, kind of on the side, and uh, so mechanical engineering IT is also a field that you can go into and that which kind of you know manages the fluidity and you know the facilitation of different online parts with. Um, you know, real moving parts. So um, I do have an inventor side. Um, can't discuss everything with you right now because of patent you know, law. Yeah, <laughs> my own little projects. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely do, and I'm uh, I'm actually really excited to get started with those things. Well, that that sounds awesome. As good as our com uh, soccer conversation was, I'm 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 almost as interested as uh, some of the things you've got up your sleeve in terms of uh, what you're going to be coming with in the future. So, um, keep us updated on that. That's uh, that's really awesome. Um, we, we know whenever I talk to student athletes, I'm just always amazed by, you know, all the things that they're into be beyond sports. And uh, so, uh, and you're just another example of that. So I really appreciate uh, you shedding some light on that and uh, spending some time with us here this morning. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you having me on. All right, TJ. Thanks. Best of luck to you and uh, Clemson this season. We'll talk to you soon.
All right. Thank you. Thanks.